Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. You may have seen our unboxing and setup video of the CreateBot DX, and today we're gonna to be unboxing and setting up the taller brother, the CreateBot DX Plus. All right, let's cut the straps. I had to lower the table a little bit because it's a ridiculously tall box. And being just one guy, I think I'm going to cut down the corners. So that was a job and a half. We spared you that. This is what's in the box, surrounded by lots of styrofoam. The acrylic doors are already installed. This is just a paper coating to protect them uh, in transit. And inside the printer, saran wrap to the bottom, there's going to be a bunch of packages that we'll have to cut free. Uh, on top, we see a circle diamond square test print. Um, they print this at the factory to prove the machine works, test it out, but also so that we can verify dimensional accuracy. And then, as I mentioned, a couple packages. So this first one here is going to be the heated bed plate, which will attach to these two arms right here on the Z-axis. So this is uh, borosilicate glass, um, and then a silicone heater on the bottom, and then the wire leads for the heater and the thermistor. Some more packaging. bag of all the tools and stuff we're going to need. This other bag here, heavy one, is going to be the two extruder uh, assemblies that will bolt onto the back of the printer. And then last, there are two rolls of filament in here. Um, red and green PLA. The filament that ships is not your standard 2.85. This is a 2.85 millimeter printer. Uh, but this filament is actually three millimeters. So if you are using this, make sure that you have that setting set properly in your slicer. And before we go much further, I'm gonna take this paper off. All right, let's open up our bag of parts here. So they give us masking tape. I wouldn't use this on the bed. Normally I would put a piece of uh, glass on top of the stock glass, just like a sacrificial piece in case something happens to the glass surface I'm printing on. At least I haven't ruined the stock bed. They give you glue stick, which will help with adhesion if you need that. They give you a bunch of spare parts. So this is the heater cartridge, a uh, micro switch, like an end stop, a couple small pieces of PTFE here. These are the pieces of PTFE that go inside the hot end. It is a PTFE lined hot end. They give you all the assembly tools you're gonna to need and a scraper. The handles that we're gonna bolt onto each of the door panels here. They're aluminum handles. And then some more spare parts. Uh, they give you uh, an extra hinge for the door panels. They also give you a extra stepper stick or stepper driver. Um, not that I expect you to ever need that, but it's nice to have that in case you do. And a bunch of spare nuts and bolts. A USB cable, if you want to print tethered, there's a USB on the other side of the printer. It's a USB um, B, so printer style, the square one. And in this case, a different test print than before. This is a whistle, and they are kind of showcasing the dual nozzle, dual extrusion capabilities of the machine. So this would be PVA support, um, so dissolvable support material, um, and then just a PLA or whatever uh, whistle. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do is get this glass heated bed and the undercarriage here assembled onto those two posts that are sticking out of the Z-axis. So, to do this, we're going to put those rods through the gap between the glass and the undercarriage here. And then there are screws in here that will fit into these keyholes. So there's four of these. Um, and make sure you're obviously inserting it with the leads facing the back of the printer so they should be flush against the back. So just be careful as you slide this in. There's very little clearance here. I'm actually going to have to go below this little notch there. There we go. Okay. 
And in this case, I'm actually gonna have to release the tension on the bed springs just to make even more space. We're kind of going in on a bit of an angle. There we go. Perfect, okay. So now that that's in there, I'm going to line the screws up with the larger part of the keyhole here and just loosen them so that they poke through. We'll do this to all four. And then push the bed up and slide it back. And now while holding it back, just a little bit of pressure on the front, we'll tighten these screws down. And then taking the cable that's in the bottom of the printer here, we will connect these leads. So this JST connector here, it's keyed, it only goes in one way. This is for the thermistor. And then these two are for the bed heater itself. Um, there's no polarity to them. It doesn't matter which one you connect them into. Just connect them into these screw terminals here. And that's it for that. I've obviously turned the printer around because we're done with the other side for now. We're gonna attach the extruders to the back here. Very carefully cut through this plastic. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can unwind it. There we go. So inside this nylon braided sleeve, there is the wiring for both of the nozzles, the hot end assembly, and the two Bowden tubes. What we're interested in is the couplers for the end of the Bowden tubes right here, these two couplers. Um, and being dual extrusion, they've actually numbered them for us. So nozzle one and two, or extruder one and two. Um, so if you're facing the front of the printer, one is on the left, two is on the right. Make sure that these stay in line and go to the appropriate extruder. Those extruders, as I mentioned, are in this heavy bundle here that we pulled out earlier. careful if you're cutting through here because there's also some cables inside here. Each of the extruders has a filament runout sensor in it. So there will be a JST cable on a little lead for that. So the CreateBot DX Plus has a build volume of 300 by 250 by 520 millimeters high. Uh, the layer resolution up to 0.02 millimeters. As I mentioned, it takes three millimeter or 2.85 millimeter filament. The X and Y posi positioning precision is 12.7 microns with a Z positioning precision of 1.25 microns and a total system uh, power consumption of 300 watts. And they claim a max printing speed of 120 millimeters a second with traveling upwards of 200 millimeters a second. Uh, the max nozzle temperature on this printer is 350 degrees Celsius with a max bed temperature of 100. The extruders that we saw on the back have a, they are a geared extruder with a 1 to 10 gear ratio and they are using 1.8 millimeter stepper motors with 1 16th micro stepping and it has a total weight of 30 kilograms. All right, very well packaged indeed. So the extruders get mounted onto these posts here. They go through these holes and there's a, uh, a nut to put on the end. You wanna make sure that you put them so that the um, spot where the coupler screws in is facing up. The extruders are also numbered, so this is pretty foolproof. So this one is numbered one. It's gonna go over there with that connection facing upwards, as I mentioned. So in the box of, or bag of screws, we're gonna need four for this. These look like M4s, if I had to guess. Um, but find the nuts that fit. They're like nylock nuts, so they've got a little nylon washer in them. So they'll not come loose on you. And I'm just gonna hand thread that as much as possible and kind of hold that on there. Now this is a lot easier with a um, socket wrench but I'll use just the standard wrenches that they gave us. Just 
just make sure that those are good and snug. You don't need to go too crazy with them. And we'll do the same thing with number two. All right, so we got them both bolted up. We can connect the connector connectors now. So as I said before, this red JST is the filament runout sensor. And then obviously the stepper motor needs a connection there. And again on this side. I'm just gonna release the tension on these levers so that we'll be able to feed filament up in them. And then we'll connect the Bowden tubes into the top and just screw this in until it's tight. You don't need to go too overboard. So the only thing left to do at the back here is to mount the spool holders. So there are two for this printer. They give you these threaded rods with little screw on ends. Um, put the long part of the threaded rod into the printer, the short end for the nut on the end here. The reason for that is you can kind of lock this down against the, the lack of threads at the end so it doesn't move any further. Because if you imagine a roll of filament being on, on the holder here, moving this way up into the uh, extruder there, um, it would be tightening uh, this nut, and if there were more threads, that nut would actually tighten and then compress the filament against the back of the unit, um, causing a, like a snag. So to load the filament, you want to release the tension on this arm here. This arm has an idler that's pressing against the drive gear, and then there's a chamfered hole in the bottom feed your filament up through the hole, cut your filament on the typical 45 as you would to make feeding, feeding it in the hole and the uh, and pass the Bowden tube and everything uh, a little bit easier. And once you've got it all the way to the hot end, just tension that down to uh, apply a little bit of spring-loaded pressure against that lever. So that's it for the back. We'll flip it around. We're going to install the handles and then we'll do a bed leveling routine. So we'll take the uh, aluminum handles and just mount them on the acrylic panels now. A whole bunch of these little screws. We'll use this included screwdriver and just bolt through the panel. All right, that's it for assembly. Um, before we do anything further, we need to remove these retaining clips. So on the rods for the X and Y, to keep the hot end stationary during transit, there are these 3D printed retaining clips. Um, it's absolutely imperative that you remove these, because otherwise, when you try to home all axes or move X and Y at all, you're gonna end up with some horrible grinding noises. Briefly, check to make sure that the X and Y move smoothly by hand. Um, just uh, in case anything is kind of askew, you'd need to square those up, but that's all moving smooth as expected. And now we can turn on the printer. We will um, tighten down the bed entirely using those uh, screws at the bottom uh, that we used earlier to provide us a little more clearance. So we'll tighten down the bed all the way just to make sure that when we do home the Z that the nozzle doesn't smack into the bed. And then as we go through the bed leveling routine, we'll uh, loosen these as, as needed to make sure that we have the appropriate space between the nozzle and the bed surface. If you are gonna put uh, three millimeter glass, as I recommended, uh, on top of this, you're gonna need to leave these screws almost completely compressed. Okay, I've got lots of clearance there. So I'll plug in the printer, turn it on, and uh, we'll take a look at the LCD screen. All right, turning on the printer. We have a pretty nice uh, touch interface here. So if we go to uh, move axis, we should be in all home. You could home the uh, axes independently if you wish. So I could home X, you should see it move over to the left. Home Y, it's now at the front corner. And then we'll just do all home for fun. 
So because I tightened them uh, so much earlier on, uh, there's uh, quite the gap between the nozzle tips and the bed. So I'm just gonna bring that a little bit closer, get us kind of in the ballpark. And as always, we're going to do our bed leveling at temperature. So on the LCD, there is a preheat option and that by default will heat nozzle one. So the nozzle on the left, uh, it's gonna heat it to 210 in this case. And the bed over here is being heated to 45 with its current temperature around 21.4. Um, so once those are up to temperature, we'll continue. All right, it's completely up to temperature now. Um, you may notice also that the secondary nozzle is a little bit higher. That's normal. It's just to really make sure that that second nozzle typically used for support material doesn't uh, contact the print while you're printing with the primary nozzle. Um, you can height adjust uh, the nozzles to make them exactly the same. But for the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to use the left nozzle only for checking the bed height. So I just want to make sure that there's a little bit of drag and you can either use the on-screen motion controls to move it to the back corner, or you can very carefully, if the steppers have let go, move it to the back corner. And if you notice that you don't have enough clearance and the nozzle is dragging as you do, just increase the tension on that back screw. And then checking again, paper, make sure that there is some drag. Okay. So now that I've gone around once, uh, because as I adjust each corner, I'm affecting the heights of the other ones. I'm going to go around one more time and just make sure that everything's perfectly level. Perfect. So now that I have a level bed, I've confirmed that the heating is working and I've confirmed that all the axes are moving appropriately. I would be ready to actually load the filament and do our test print. Before shutting the machine off, I am going to use a proper cool down uh, under the main menu there where we had the preheat button before. There's now a cool down button. So press that. And you can see that the nozzles are no longer set to a temperature. The set temperature is the one on top. Uh, if I try to power the printer down right now and everything is at temperature, it will actually warn me on the screen that it's in the middle of a cool down and it will automatically shut itself off once that's reached um, a low enough temperature to do so. So hopefully that helped you in unboxing and setting up your CreateBot DX Plus. Remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the future. And if you have any questions about the CreateBot or any of the other printers you've seen on our channel. Thanks for watching.